Я могу пересесть, если мешает там.
и господа. Просьте...
Уважаемые дамы и господа, приветствуем вас на дискуссионной сессии про новые возможности международного железнодорожного туризма «Куда поехать?». Модератор дискуссионной сессии, автор и ведущий научно-популярных программ телеканала НТВ Сергей Александрович Малоземов. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to our discussion session, where to go, new opportunities for international railway tourism. And the session will be moderated by Sergey Malazemov, author and host of popular, popular science TV shows and TV channel. Me, I as a passenger, I might admit that the railroad is not the first thing that's on, uh, on my list of the top things that when I think about uh, taking trips long, uh, distance trips with the family and so forth. Maybe we don't know uh, enough about those opportunities. And when we were preparing uh, for the session, I made, uh, I jotted ju down some uh, notes about my future of uh, trips, of uh, possibilities with my family in the future. There are some new things and there are things that I am not even, even aware of. And you will hear everything about it from wonderful uh, speakers who were participating in this session. I will invite um, uh, Mr. Zhelsov, Deputy Director General of City Tourist Information Bureau of St. Petersburg, um, Mr. Tatu uh, Tuominin, the, uh, vice, uh, the Senior Vice President of VR Group in Finland, and uh, Eric Leitva, uh, the uh, Chairman of the Governing Board and Director General of uh, Estonska, Eston Estonian Railways, Alexander Kondratenka, Vice uh, G Director General of Archi Day Racial Railways Tour, and Alexander Loshmanov, the Vice uh, Director General on Development of Passenger Transport of Transport Holding, JSC. I'd like to ask to uh, put up on the screen uh, the information about the voting opportunity that will take place during the session. You can as, uh, use the QR code on the screen if you already have the app on your mobile devices for a forum 1520. Everything will be m so much easier for you. And uh, we'll ask a provocative question at, towards the end of the session. I'll be very grateful if you participate in the voting and share your opinion, uh, opinion that will be used by us further for further uh, conclusions. And we'll begin, of course, with a very uh, hot topic of electronic visas for foreigners coming into Russia. Uh, me, uh, I, as along with uh, so many others, we have uh, friends among the foreigners, and uh, I always feel sorry for them because uh, uh, the processes, the procedures of uh, applying and uh, getting the visa, obtaining the visa, and crossing the border, it's, uh, well, it's painful. But beginning uh, uh, with the 1st of October, there is a new procedure introduced. The new procedure of the 21st century, uh, uh, an electronic visa for foreigners, and how it happens in reality and how it reflects, is just reflected uh, in the activity of the railroads, I'd like to ask Nikita Zhiltsov, our uh, uh, representative from St. Petersburg of uh, the City Tourist Information Bureau. For now, the, this new procedure isn't working uh, for railroads. Uh, in order to get to St. Petersburg, you, you uh, cannot still use this new procedure, uh, a procedure and there are uh, ways to get to St. Petersburg by railroad. So what are the uh, future predi predictions and your expectations, Mr. Zhiltsov, uh, what do you expect from the uh, tourist flow? What's going on right now? Thank you, dear colleagues. Thank you for the question. Uh, uh, as early as for the 1st of October, uh, this procedure has been working, and uh, this, introdu this uh, um, procedure was uh, is available for ma the majority of the countries of Europe, as, as well as uh, tourists from the Latin uh, South America. In order for the foreigners to obtain such electronic visa, there are no uh, consulate, consular fees uh, involved, and the uh, time of issuance of that electronic visa is four days, and uh, it's calendar days, not work days. Uh, 
we usually we uh, remember the times when uh, the foreign uh, tourists applying for the visas they used to uh, send in their file in their paperwork uh, at least a month uh, ahead of time S now we don't have those uh, requirements anymore you only need to go to the website of the uh, in uh, Ministry of uh, International Affairs of Russia so we are talking about an exclusive simplification of procedures for St. Petersburg and for Kaliningrad uh, region. Besides that, uh, just for you to know, uh, the uh, the uh, time for the approval is uh, 30 days, and, uh, and the f uh, visa free uh, uh, t t term is five days maximum. And w w in case if there are no uh, violations of the procedures. Besides that, currently the railroad uh, checkpoints are not included in th on the list of checkpoints where you can uh, cross uh, the border having an electronic visa. We hoped, along with our colleagues from Finland and Estonia, that these checkpoints would be included in the list. But the reason is uh, for that is uh, uh, the technological uh, lagging behind, and not unav unavailability. But beginning uh, as, as early as next year, uh, we are making everything possible for the uh, availability of those checkpoints at for the train Allegro and for the Finland train station. And uh, we're working on the uh, distribution of those procedures on all checkpoints uh, beginning with 2021. We have very high expectations, very optimistic con expectations for that. What do we expect from the electronic visa? Why are we so happy about it? The government of St. Petersburg uh, since long ago uh, tried to implement this project and uh, with the participation of Mr. Biglov, the governor of uh, St. Petersburg and uh, Mr. Markov, the uh, uh, governor of uh, the St. Petersburg region, and we expect an uh, um, increase in, t in, uh, in the passenger uh, tourist flow by 2.5 million uh, people a year. Uh, there used to be a, a tourist agency at the UN, and the, with the simplification of the procedures of visas and for the electronic visa visas, um, it will uh, cause the increase of uh, the passenger flow and tourist flow by 30% in the cu first couple of years. And of course, uh, at the end of that two, three year period, we are expecting the f uh, increase in the flow by 10 million people. So the, uh, and the term, the increased term of a uh, uh, single uh, entry uh, uh, visa. And uh, now, and we are also uh, counting on the increase of the stay of the tourists, one time, time uh, stay in St. Petersburg, uh, as, m as many as eight to nine uh, days compared to five to six days before. And a little bit of statistics, as we know, in the Far East, this um, mode, uh, this this uh, uh, mode was active since 2017 in Vladivostok in the Far East, and there were 179, 106 passengers uh, who used, and uh, the using that uh, the same mode uh, the, in Kaliningrad there were 51,113 passengers, and in and then in, in Saint Petersburg there were 3,629 tourists who used the mode of the electronic. Uh, visa and there is a high demand for s this uh, service and the uh, tourists and the uh, clients are getting used to this new procedure and there is a leaflet that is being uh, given away and distributed at the checkpoints and uh, at the border uh, the, to inform uh, the uh, tourists and also this information is available on our website, official website and uh, we're expecting to deal and uh, cope with the increasing uh, passenger flow our checkpoints are located at, at Pulkovo Airport, and the maritime checkpoints have a huge reserve of potential for increase of the passenger flow. Along with the, our Kaliningrad colleagues, we are working uh, on increasing the capacity, uh, especially for the checkpoints for automobile transport. Thank you very much. 
So we're not only to, uh, talking about the uh, simplification of this procedure of entering Russia for the foreigners. We're talking about also about new uh, tourist routes, uh, including uh, railroads between Kaliningrad and St. Petersburg, for example, and the neighboring countries like Finland, where uh, people are love to travel by car. And if there are new uh, uh, new transports and new tourist uh, routes that uh, foreigners and Russian citizens can enjoy, it would be a lot easier to travel to and fro. And there is a very popular uh, transport and the tourist uh, destination, uh, the city of Imatra in Finland. Many uh, have traveled there for shopping and just for to walk around and to uh, actually enjoy the, uh, the healthy Finnish uh, atmosphere. And there was a pilot a trip that uh, the uh, one of the uh, our rail, uh, railroad trains took to Imatra from St. Petersburg. I'd like to ask Mr. Tatu Tuominen to share uh, the experience, the, and their impression of how this uh, trip uh, worked and what are the prospects. Maybe just a couple of words for introduction to begin with. Uh, this Finnish Russian passenger transportation or the passenger traffic is around according to the information that I have received just today, 80% of all RZD international passenger traffic. So the, the relation is quite important. At the moment, Moscow Helsinki is served by night, night train Tolstoy and St. Petersburg Helsinki by high-speed Allegro trains, four trains a day. And it, it's evident that the traffic is on the rise. In nine months this year, uh, almost half a million passengers were transported and it is 15.7% uh, more than in the same period of the last year. The exact figure is 485,000, and I think that we are going to exceed the, the half a million this year, and it will be a new record. This growth concerns both of those trains, uh, Allegro and also Tolstoy. Allegro has grown 15.9%, and Tolstoy 14.2%. Uh, if you look at the segments or the structure of the passenger traffic uh, in Allegro, uh, it is so that 45.9% um, of travelers are Russians, 31.6% are Finns, uh, and then passengers for, from third countries is 26.3%, and there has been growth in all these segments. Russian segment has grown over 20%, Finnish segment almost 10% uh, and also the passengers from third countries, almost 10%. But that as an introduction. And then coming to the Lastochka train, uh, we are group and RCD are constantly, we're working together on the development of passenger traffic between Russia and Finland, both in terms of improving the quality and diversity of services and in terms of expanding the geography. A trial run of Lastochka train from St. Petersburg to Imatra took place one month ago, September 28th this year. It shows that for a regular run, we need to uh, do three things to make the regular run work. First, the border crossing itself must receive international status. Second, the border crossing must be equipped with infrastructure for passengers. And third, the frontier guard on both sides should be expanded. We are, we are a group. We are working very closely together with RCD in this project. Uh, fixing of those issues this month two and three that I mentioned, it will take time, but it, it is achievable, and, and I'm sure that we will uh, do it in, the, in a little bit longer run. Uh, in parallel with the solution of the main tasks of the project, we are a group, uh, us, we are working to improve the efficiency of the future, future train by coordinating it, its schedule with VR regular domestic trains so that there would be proper connections from Imatra further. It is quite an, quite an uh, interesting, when you look at the map of Finland and you see now how the Allegro, when it crosses the border, it goes directly to west, but this Imatra will go uh, towards north and that opens up new ideas and possibilities and we are looking forward to 
see what grows out of those. We are sure that the trade will be popular among the residents of St. Petersburg and in Eastern Finland. It will be a conf comfortable alternative to traditional trips by private cars or buses, both in, in Finland and in, in Russia. And, and uh, one additional point that I would like to mention is that nowadays when people's environmental awareness is growing, the uh, environmental friendliness of rail transportation will be an additional argument for potential customers. Thank you. Thank you so much. And what are you expecting? Uh, what is your forecast? Yes, okay, I would like saying that uh, the initiative uh, of the President of Russia on the introduction of electronic visa deserves all thanks. It's very welcome initiative. And it will certainly serve to ensure that Russia will uh, become even more open to the world. Uh, according to the information that I have received, in just two weeks after the introduction of electronic visas, more than 15,000 applications were received. And, and by the end of the year, an increase of five times is projected. Uh, most applications are from Finland, Germany, and, and Switzerland. And as you know, you can get to St. Petersburg and Leningrad region using e-visa by any other <laughs> transport than rail. I mean, plane, car, ship, and even on foot, but not by rail. And, and the reason is that, for technical reasons, it is not yet possible to organize the verification of electronic visas in a moving train. This is, of course, disappointing for us in, in VR group and, and, and say also for the people of Finland as the high-speed train Allegro is very popular. But we are quite uh, sure that this will be worked out. We are really grateful to Mr. Belozerov and his team for the efforts aiming, aiming, aimed at extending the validity of electronic visas to passengers of Allegro. And we are sure that the positive decision will not take long. People traveling by train appreciate comfort and, and convenience. So they are good customers also for the hospitality industry of the city of St. Petersburg. Uh, we estimate uh, that the possibility to use e-visas will double the number of Finns traveling by Allegro and also attract more passengers from the third countries. It will also allow to travel spontaneously, which will not only expand the customer base, but will allow people to travel more often and at the first opportunity. Uh, and it is clear that the more often Finns travel to Russia, the better they will get to know the country and the stronger our friendship will be. Спасибо. Спасибо большое, знаменитый. Thank you very much. Yes, St. Petersburg, the famous bars of St. Petersburg, the whole city waiting, waiting for the guests from Finland and from neighbor countries. Finnish uh, view on this issue have just witnessed. And let's talk with Estonia. Uh, what's the Estonian opinion? Mr. Mr. Eric Leidve, I would like to ask you a question. So we all know that according to the statistics that roughly one third applicants who want the electronic visa are from Estonia. Why so? Uh, how do you estimate the influence of this new system for the railroad transportation? Uh, yes, indeed, that is absolutely true. So here I'd like to stress that we can tell that we're expecting a significant, significant increase in the number of visitors and a very good perspective. So to start my presentation, uh, as an introduction word, I would like to uh, make a small review of the tourism flow, uh, how it is there today. And then uh, at the end of my presentation, uh, you will uh, see and witness how this effect can be Im implemented in the real life with new electronic visas turn two words about our internal transportation by railways. As you can see on this diagram, uh, during the last uh, five years, we can see a stable growth. Seven, eight uh, percent per year is the annual growth. So this year we're expecting that the growth will be higher because even now it's more than nine percent. So we can see that we don't have enough 
uh, facilities for that substantial growth. So our government uh, made a specific orders and measures so we can tell uh, that uh, our uh, rolling stock uh, with the 38 uh, trains with the Stadler Flirt, so we are expecting that next month we will have issue a tender and we will purchase six more additional electric trains. Why electric trains? So uh, today our rolling stock is 50-50, it's conceding from electric and diesel uh, trains, so uh, we can say locomotives. So you can say right now we are moving into the direction of the full electrification of our rolling stock of Estonian railways. This decision is already approved. So by the year 2028, all our magistral railroads by the Estonian railways will be electric ones. So the investment amount is uh, 300 million euros. So we can say that this uh, program will be implemented and it will uh, influence the cargo transportation by railway and I'm pretty sure that it will also help and assist in the international passenger transportation by rail. So it will be a positive impact. So to come to the international railway transportation. So we have a very good opportunity and uh, the, the train St. Petersburg Tallinn Moscow is working actively. It has a stable requirement. A stable growth is 2 to 3% uh, per year annual growth. So here we can see that this uh, electric train and have electric visa for it will give us a possibility and an opportunity to have a significant substantial growth with the tourist flow. If annually we are transporting now uh, roughly internationally about 110,000 passengers, so we're expecting that this number will grow to a 50% growth we're expecting. So uh, more than that, uh, it is uh, this opportunity to have an electronic visa will give us a possibility and new opportunities for creating new projects. So these new projects we would like to implement together with the Russian railways. So here I'm talking about uh, two main uh, direction, two main projects, or even three main projects. So the first one is the green line on this, uh, it's from Tallinn to St. Petersburg a railway uh, train. So it helps our neighbors uh, uh, from Finland. So we know that Allegro train works perfectly well. So from Tallinn to St. Petersburg we can get within four and a half hours. So that will be a very popular one. And uh, it the growth of the passenger flow will be evident. So this train, it will be an additional train to the Moscow train which is existing now. So this uh, will have its own niche. So uh, as the preliminary research work shows that we will be able to create uh, special working groups, working teams together with Russian railways to make a justification, technical terms of reference for this train. So on these terms of reference, we will see our uh, program, how we can do our roadmap. So another two, with the blue line. So this train is working already now from St. Petersburg to Pskov. So we have a joint idea to extend this uh, train that it will go from Estonia, from Koidula, so with the help of this extension we will manage to link the southern Estonia with St. Petersburg. This will give us an opportunity for additional growth to jump forward to increase the amount of uh, passengers. It's also a possibility from the southern Estonia citizens to visit and uh, witness the beauty of St. Petersburg. We all know how many attractions are there. So the third one on this uh, slide you can see it's from Koidula to Valga it's from Kaliningrad region so there it will be also very good link and a good junction and give additional opportunities for passengers to travel to Kaliningrad region so in towards all those possible positive effects you can see on this slide on this picture as I have mentioned earlier 
we are witnessing that the growth will be not 30 percent it will be higher we think that this is a will be at least a 50 percent growth that's what should we expect so those uh, high velocity railway transportation they depend a lot on uh, the electronic visa so my request please as soon as possible help us to move forward all the technical difficulties to solve those obstacles and problems so with this it will give us an opportunity to as we're saying it in the European Union the to give us equal opportunities equal opportunities with other means of transportation so I'm pretty sure that this will happen I'm pretty sure that the work is an active phase I heard it from my colleagues that we will get the result by the end by the end of this year beginning next year so in principle having this opportunity i'd like to mention that uh, during this first plenary session we heard that we need to make an uh, agreements and uh, measures to double triple uh, cargo transportation by railway so even though we have here discussing plans about passengers but also cargo carries is also important so today we do work in that direction so today 10 and a half million tons of transit cargo are going through Estonia without additional investments we can easily carry 30 million tons by Estonian railways so we would like to invite everyone all the cargo uh, companies who are uh, dealing with cargo transportation use our uh, possibilities use our seaports Tallinn, Halditsky our railway infrastructure in Estonia is working and ready for you uh, thank you very much. So we can see now that quite soon Russia will have new opportunities to show hospitality to our foreign guests. So we're expecting more and more guests. So what will they do in Russia? What are the attractions? So Russian railways are offering a lot new. Russian company, Russian Railways Tour. So Deputy Director Alexander Nikolaevich Kondratenko, Deputy Director of the Russian Railways Tour, so what can you propose to our foreign guests and also to Russian citizens when we're talking about uh, railway transportation? Because first, when we think about the railway, we would think maybe the airplane is better. We can use an airplane, it's much faster. And then after that, we can rent a car and drive around and can use the train just for one day. But what is an alternative? What kind of new trains and possibilities do we have? Dear colleagues, good morning. Uh, so, Arja de Tour. Russian uh, Railways Tour. It is a sister company of the Russian Railways and uh, we are making the tourism internal and external by Russian Railways more popular. It is known that tourism is a big income. In some countries it's the major income. So our goal is to develop, to develop the number of passengers which we're carrying by uh, railways. During the last 10 years the tourism sphere is increasing significantly it is becoming more and more diverse so you can say it's uh, one of the driver of the economic sector in the world so we can say that we need to cope with all those new changes and challenges therefore we have a strategy a strategy of development of creating a new tourism infrastructure uh, in the whole area of Russian Federation so to create a competitive market to have a specific products and uh, also with the help of the federal subsidies to create a good atmosphere improve the quality of tourism services for our passengers so uh, tourism on the railway started from the beginning of 19th century until the middle of the 20th century it was the main transportation and all the tourists at that time they were using it frequently but nowadays uh, we can see that the situation has changed because the aviation and uh, the roads the network are well developed so we have lost our position our share in the market but we're trying to win it back so coming back into the history so the tourism was developing uh, on the railway and uh, the founder was Thomas Cook everybody knows Thomas Cook on the 5th of July of 1841 he started the first trip on uh, the railway in 1841 that was a nine uh, car train which uh, went in the suburb of uh, English city 
association of uh, people who, uh, who are against uh, drinking alcohol want for a like a tourist trip so that was the beginning after that the tourist roads they were well developed in quite many countries and for example in Spain there was a cruising train which was called Al Andalus Al Andalus it had a circle uh, road and you can see the best cities of Spain Madrid Sevilla Cordoba Granada so cruising trains are also existing in India. In India, they are luxury trains. They call Palace on Wheels, and those uh, luxury trains are built up in uh, the kind of the palace of Maharaja style. So during eight days, people are experiencing traveling around India in luxury. So in Africa as well, a royal train. So they have twelve days. Uh, trip all inclusive like in a palace and a luxury in the year 2007 we had the first cruising train in Russia it is called Golden Eagle Russia it is a private train private touring train it was uh, traveling only a few days from Moscow to Vladivostok only a few si days within the year 15 days was the whole length of the tour it was uh, built up and included different excursions and programs it was all inclusive services so the carriages were very comfortable uh, with the television and all the facilities and services showers and stuff so it was traveling through different cities of Russian Federation and was a very very comfortable and luxury train so at the moment what is the situation our company Russian Railways tour was uh, founded in the year 2005 we have developed new interesting trails through the Trans-Siberian uh, Railway and uh, to uh, China and our train which is called Imperial Russia train is the visitor card of the whole uh, Russian Railways holding so we can say that uh, traveling on the Trans-Siberian Railway in the past was called a pearl uh, in the Russian crown so uh, we can say that annually on these cruising tours on the imperial train we have up to 5,000 foreign tourists from Europe, Australia and Asia so in our train we have a special you know, cars and sp special carriages not that only comfortable comfortable one but they have a special animation program so those are places where people can go to the gym can go to the restaurant or watch a cinema so the length of Trans-Siberian Railway is the longest in the world 9289 kilometers so the road includes you staying during the night in the train comfortably and during the day you have an excursion every time in a different city of Russian Federation including uh, a railway around the Baikal Lake on a very old retro train our tourists can visit and have a trip around the Baikal Lake so this product uh, is uh, well developed in a cruising uh, segment of tourism and at the beginning we had only two trains but today we have a higher demand so we have eight trains which are annually circulating on this tourism road uh, Imperial Russia and Golden Eagle road as it is called so besides we have uh, also a retro train tours and they are also a visitor visit uh, like a card from uh, Russian railways and there are all very few cities uh, where there are steam engine trains which are able to go on uh, the modern rails so in the world there are only 20 cities which are offering you this opportunity and we are very glad that in the seven cities of Russian Federation we have this opportunity with the old steam engine trains which are frequently making uh, tours Moscow, St. Petersburg, Irkutsk, Rostov, Omdon, Perm, Balagoya and Sarkavala in Karelia next to Finnish border so every year the excursion tours on the steam engine trains 
um, becoming more and more popular. So uh, our company, our firm is trying to make a new product such as a weekend tour. So weekend tour is a very short program just for, for one day or two days in the suburbs of Moscow or St. Petersburg. There are very mm, very many locations. They're very beautiful and very diverse, uh, very interesting excursions. Kolomna, Kolomna, uh, Rizan, Konstantinova, Tula, Yasnaya Polyana, visit to Lev Tolstoy premises, also a frequent road to Baradino, to the Monina uh, with the Museum of Artillery and uh, Military Museum. So this year we have started new roads from St. Petersburg. So those are to the Areshek Fortress. Areshek Fortress and uh, we are also developing new tours for different other cities of Russian Federation, the neighbor of St. Petersburg. In this uh, retro tours, uh, during the last year, we had about 25,000 clients, tourists. 40% of them were from foreign countries. So right now I'm telling you about this uh, round the Baikal Lake railway. So half of those tourists who came from abroad around, if you take the train, retro train around the Baikal Lake, half of them were from China. So uh, annually we are, we are seeing that uh, we have annual growth of uh, our tourism flow. So we, if we compare it with the September of the last year, and the same period until September of this year, we are expanding two times. So, and the most important thing, what we are getting ready for. So, of course, uh, the other means of transportation uh, should be linked to our railway. So, we need to develop a new collaborate roads, which will include uh, uh, using a retro steam engine train, using normal train, and link it together with the water roads, with sea powering, with the airplanes, with automobile roads. We're already collaborating with automobile transportation roads because we have a, a link with buses. They're bringing our tourists from uh, the uh, railway train station over to the border and back. And so, of course, we want to keep a secret, to keep the intrigue, but to just give you the small insight, we do plan several excursions. These excursions will join people and will be very diverse. So we will link it with the mushroom picking, with fishing and with other, other industries. Thank you very much. And Alexander, uh, what, what is the uh, competitive advantage of uh, your program compared to one day guided tour on a bus uh, instead of uh, going there by train or combining a train trip to a, a, with a bus trip. Well, the first advantage, of course, is is the safety because railroads are the, the safest means of transportation if you compare it to the automotive uh, means of transportation. Secondly, is the distance and the uh, precision and diligence of the uh, schedule. And we uh, always follow the schedule. And even our irregular or sporadic tours, they are included in the regular train schedules in order to calculate the time of the uh, departure and the return to the train stations. For children's tours, I foresee the advantage uh, in the tra railroad transportation as a priority and uh, and we have a lot of passenger, a huge passenger flow with children historically and the next thing is that uh, the uh, ease of uh, going through the train and uh, just walking through the train the train is uh, one of the adventures as well for example, a trip that may take up to four hours to the uh, Seliger Lake, if it's combined with educational programs or entertainment programs, 
it will uh, people will not even know and don't, will not notice the time and the longitude of that trip and there will be no traffic jams on the way as well thank you very much now we will le learn whether you have been able uh, as a professional audience to uh, be con convinced let's uh, see on the screen the questions for the voting uh, at this session let's begin with a slide uh, that contains a link and I'll uh, uh, tell you what the question is about you actually only have to point your uh, mobile devices uh, camera to the code which has a link and then it will lead you to the question the question is uh, what uh, how long the railroad trips would be of interest to you. And we have options, one to two days first, up to uh, one week and over a week, and uh, I'm not ready at all. The final option, let's play this game together. Maybe uh, you'll have to uh, zoom in on the QR code using your camera so that the camera recognizes the link, or you can just enter the uh, the uh, link that you see on the screen and just uh, take a vote. And at the end of the session, we will draw a conclusion and we'll calculate the votes and uh, let's take the vote. And we'll, meanwhile, we'll talk uh, professionally. What are the legislative or uh, normative or technological limitations in international passenger transportation, how to overcome them. I'd like to give the floor to Piotr Ivan, uh, Ivanov, uh, the Director General of uh, FPK, the Federal uh, Passenger Company. Uh, dear colleagues, at the at, uh, plenary session, you may have heard that the seamless technologies uh, using international railway transportation are one of the goals that we set before us, one of the objectives. And if Alexander Kondratenko talked about it, a uh, tourist uh, trend in railroad activities, and I'd like to focus more on the technological and legislative uh, limitations that are still there, that we face, and could that could influence the development. Uh, the trends themselves and the increase of the passenger flow. Currently, uh, we, serve, we supply 23 uh, destinations uh, internationally. We have 116 trains federally uh, formed along with uh, other railroads and we transported 6.5 million passengers last year. The development in this area is uh, uh, not very regular, uh, especially with uh, Finland. We had a maximum growth with, uh, in comparison with them. With Germany and Italy, we see the, we witness the growth of uh, um, transportation, and with uh, China and Mongolia as well. And uh, exclusively, uh, there was a drop uh, by 300,000 passengers uh, in uh, our transportation to Ukraine and, and, and back. Many uh, uh, p people would choose uh, transportation by train if they could uh, avoid those limitations that they're still, they're still facing currently. We know that in, in many uh, destinations, the time for customs uh, and uh, passport control may take up to four to five hours due to the, long, uh, the, the length of the procedures. And in part, uh, across some destinations, this uh, time even uh, has been increased uh, with the Central Asian uh, countries like Kazakhstan, for example, because it takes longer for uh, those procedures. Currently, we have a wonderful example of uh, cooperation with our Finnish colleagues and uh, that what Tatu has mentioned in his speech, this growth is thanks to the time of, uh, of, the, of, of that long, the length of the trip, which is um, three point, um, well, 3.5 hours. And the crossing procedure has been uh, uh, decreased radically and we can actually uh, re uh, upscale this experience to other uh, trains as well and the uh, 
uh, in our transportation to Kaliningrad, we're looking at the same option and uh, the link of mi between Chernyakhovskaya and Chernyshevskaya. Uh, we can use the same procedure, and we c if we apply this uh, in our transportation uh, f uh, with Belarus, Belarus and uh, Lithuania, we could actually decrease the time of uh, customs and border control uh, pass control by hours. So the use of the new technologies is first uh, about well, it, it, it may include uh, the legislative solutions on behalf of the government, but we as a an op transportation operator, we work as a part of the bilateral work groups and uh, intergovernmental commissions, and we're looking forward and working on the solutions of these problems. If we talk about the European Union, uh, the Schengen Code is, what is the basis, the legislative basis, uh, which is uh, used for administra administering uh, procedures at the borders, but there are limitations uh, due to the uh, speed of the trains. Speed trains uh, uh, can apply uh, those fast procedures, and those uh, trains which are not high speed, they still, still face the limitations. Of course, those limitations are kind of strange, because uh, faster trains enjoy a uh, faster passage through those uh, border procedures. And along with our colleagues, we're, we'll be working uh, uh, for making this possible, uh, the faster procedures for as many trains as, as possible. And um, the modern digital technologies allow us to pass the information, send information ahead of time about the number of passengers and the cargo transported so that the customs and uh, border procedures could be could run smoother. Talking about electronic visas, of course, it's a very uh, good initiative which allow us to increase the passenger flow uh, in international destinations. We talk, mentioned some figures. Uh, Nikita mentioned 20% uh, of growth from uh, St. Petersburg in passenger flow. And we are somewhere in the middle in the growth that we will see uh, in general in passenger transportation in Russian railroads. But it goes without saying that it is a very positive trend in case of uh, introducing those uh, new technologies and procedures in the Russian railroads, which, allow us, which will allow us to uh, increase the passenger flow. Another example that introduced certain limitations was the uh, the uh, new s uh, uh, solution uh, that was introduced by the European com Commission as of uh, 1st of January, January 2019, uh, limiting the weight of, of uh, 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 luggage for per person, passenger. As you know that uh, the, the limit of uh, currency carried along uh, while borrowed crossing is 10,000 euro and we are expecting that uh, for some, um, and hoping for some amendments to the leg legislation with, with which allow for unification of uh, uh, your, uh, air transportation and railroad transportation. And all of those issues are, are the subject, non object of our attention. And um, uh, in the February of 2019, the Committee of Domestic uh, Railroad of the uh, European Commission, there was a convention uh, accepted in unification of um, requirements for uh, goods and luggage, and this document is being uh, revised right now, and we hope for other countries to join this uh, so, uh, so solution and convention. It's a recommendation for now, but it will eventually allow to increase the uh, number of goods and luggage transported by passengers. Thank you very much, and I'd like to uh, ask my colleagues at the uh, at the panel to uh, look at the results of voting. I hope everybody c uh, was able to follow the link. And if you haven't voted yet, please use your chance, and we'll uh, uh, announce the results in just a few seconds. When uh, Peter uh, makes sure that he has voted, he you have already voted. Okay. If it's not a secret, what was your option uh, in your voting? What would be the, the length of your railroad trip that you would take? 
well, uh, considering uh, my schedule would be up to two, do two days long. And I think this will be the, the most uh, popular option. Are there anybody, is there anybody who hasn't voted yet? It looks like everybody has. Let's uh, see the results on our screen. Well, not more than a week is the winner, the second option, which is certainly uh, a very positive news. Because usually, currently, it just happens that people travel by train uh, on weekends from Moscow to St. Petersburg, and I'll uh, be traveling with my son just uh, to take a one-day trip by train to Tula and back to look at the uh, weaponry museum there. And if uh, we see new combined tours uh, using maritime uh, transport, when we uh, have the opportunity to visit some, uh, some fortress or an island, for example, we could actually spend a week or even more there, possibly. So the prospects are being formed in front of our eyes. Um, well, we'll, well, let's see what happens. One of our speakers is Alexander Lashmanov, Deputy General Director for the Development of Passenger Transport, uh, Transmarsh Holding, JSC, and if uh, I'm not mistaken, we will be talking about new developments for international tourism. You have the floor, please. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Let, may I have a clicker, please? After such speeches of uh, operators, I um, have an addition, I feel just an additional responsibility, especially in view of the uh, voting results. We will uh, have to create a new additional comfort environment uh, that will allow passengers to travel uh, the railroads longer than a week. And the, it, the, this, having worked for uh, many years uh, in the market, and uh, our company has created uh, many, a range of products, and we have a good technological base uh, that we allow to look into the future with opti optimism. Um, using the example of our Tverskoy uh, carriage manufacturing facility, which has been in the business for over 120 years, uh, producing the manufacturing rolling stock, uh, we have a uh, about the uh, twin couch uh, units and uh, uh, single co uh, single unit con coaches, and we have a huge experience in uh, creating uh, a company tr or a brand uh, trains that can be used in such uh, tourist projects as uh, the Red uh, Arrow uh, Krasnaya Strela project with the wider uh, the, uh, compartments with the higher s uh, quality of services and. Um, bigger sizes that uh, are used uh, for dimensions that are used at international level. And as a passenger, federal passenger company, we're developing a whole range of new products that will, uh, will uh, of course, will, will uh, enjoy, will possess new uh, qualities and new solutions for uh, improving passenger comfort. We have a twin coach, uh, 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 options that have showers and ser special service areas where people can uh, purchase coffee and snacks and those areas can be used uh, as a gym, sports gym. There will be uh, showers in each compartment, no, in each carriage. And uh, following the uh, uh, assignment by P P Peter, we're looking at the possibility of creating in those carriages, uh, even even sports gyms can be uh, placed uh, there. That would be of interest to passengers. And in the nearest future, we'll have a new range of uh, two uh, level uh, carriages and the push-pull trains and the uh, rolling stock it will be upgraded. I'd, I'd like to focus more on our uh, suggestions as a concept it's in individual trains with exclusive design, ergonomically uh, adva uh, advanced, uh, so for so-called hotels on wheels and tourist trains. Here we have some sketches and designs uh, here, and we just uh, 
Uh, I think you had there will be a, a lobby area in the at each of in, a, in each of carriages, and there will be an area where the where the conductor will be checking the tickets uh, instead of standing standing outside on the platform. Uh, IT technologies uh, will be also used, and there will be a system of face rec uh, face recognition systems for passengers with luggage, and doors. Uh, between compartments and, and uh, train doors will be automatically opened. To increase the safety levels, there will be electronic locks and uh, uh, video cameras, uh, CCTV cameras, and there will be a special area uh, design design uh, designated for luggage storage, um, just as, as, at, as, at, as, as at home, for example, to create that environment. Uh, because we don't usually store our uh, shoes or luggage under the bed. So this concept previews um, two seaters and uh, even even one seat uh, sleepers, and that will be, uh, th 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 those uh, sleepers and compartments will be smart and it can be, uh, it can be controlled by a sm smart device such uh, criteria as lights and uh, temperature or ordering food in, uh, from a restaurant, um, obtaining information which is uh, relevant to the trip and uh, what will be the next stop and how long the trip will last and so forth. So that information the passenger can obtain electronically and we are planning that along uh, the trip uh, there will be a uh, Wi-Fi, uh, fast internet, uh, internet provided, along with uh, wireless charging stations. There are a few uh, preliminary sketches and designs for bunk beds and sleepers, and f for uh, two-seater and uh, four-seater uh, sleepers, and for one or two sleep uh, seat sleepers, we. Um, Preview shower cabins, and um, we have such a project for in retrospect. Uh, that, but that will be, of course, uh, an exclusive solution using all natural materials uh, in finish, so that the passenger would enjoy uh, comfort to the maximum, especially in the case of uh, long trips, like a week-long trip. Next slide, please. Uh, Pay attention that uh, this is an example of a hotel on wheels where a passenger throughout the day can, comf uh, can uh, travel comfortably both through the day or and through the night in a comfortable seat. And uh, the, the bed will not be any uh, lower in quality than a hotel. The modern world requires from us the maximum use of our time when, uh, wherever we are. So the efficient use of our time when we are by beat in the, at the office or at home or even in the train, we would also like to use this time both with pleasure and uh, uh, usefully. And uh, for that reason, we have a concept for a lounge uh, carriage to, uh, that organizes the uh, space within the carriage, including a multifunctional complex uh, with a self-service area, where uh, passengers can serve uh, them, uh, some, themselves some tea or coffee. There will be a uh, sports gym, and there will be special uh, rooms for passengers with children, and even a small cinema theater. So this uh, type of a carriage could be included in a train um, so that passengers would uh, actually spend their time more usefully, more comfortably. And uh, in my view, it May, from a first glance, it may look as a fantasy, but using our uh, vast experience and our competencies, we can actually uh, com uh, impl uh, implement this fantasy in reality. And don't be surprised that if this fantasy becomes reality tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. We're looking forward. We're looking forward to test uh, all those uh, great possibilities. So the program for today uh, with our speakers is completed. So now we have time for the round table. You can ask questions. We'll get answers from our speakers. So if you want to ask the question, this is the right time. If you don't have any questions, then you're able to approach our speakers in couloirs. So our speakers here for the business interventions. So uh, that's what our forum for. So do we have any questions from the audience? 
If no, then we have a break. We're very grateful to you. Please uh, I've talk to our speakers. We can see new possibilities, new opportunities. Our future looks uh, fantastic, looks great. We are all love high quality sleep. We are all want to not waste our time in traffic jams. We don't want to come to the airport and spend two hours for the checking. So here, what are the opportunities for the railways? So Russia is a unique case. It is a unique case because we have a very big distances. We don't have good airports in our regions. Our road network is poorly developed. So some locations in Russia are logically linked only by railway. So therefore, we need to develop. We need to develop our network, we need to develop our services, and the railway is not just transportation. It's not just a means of transportation, it's something different. I am sincerely convinced in that. So I believe that the railway transportation will be more and more popular. Thank you very much one more time. Дамы и господа, через несколько минут в пресс-центре состоится церемония подписания соглашений. Просим вас пройти в пресс-центр. Благодарим за внимание. Ladies and gentlemen, the agreement signing ceremony will begin in the press center in a few minutes. We kindly ask you to go to the press center. Thank you for your attention.